Good afternoon, everybody. We'll begin the new part of our meetings regarding the principles of criminal law and the characteristics of modern philosophy of criminal law nowadays. Uh, today we'll start to think uh, or about one of the main interesting problems in uh, modern criminal law. Uh, I guess everybody knows everything about it and nobody knows whether to work with it. The case is that, that there is a well, conspiracy, a real conspiracy in our uh, minds, well, in our philosophy of law, in our characteristics of criminal law and characteristics of crime. Do you remember that every crime or criminal offense has four main characteristics? One of them is connected with the social destructiveness. Yes. This is the second with the uh, well legal and formal uh, characteristic. The third with the psychological characteristic or inner characteristic of this crime, the guiltiness. Yes, and the fourth uh, with the punishment, with punishability. That's why some people say, well, uh, criminality as a whole. Last lecture, when we try to reach uh, well, the hill of uh, characteristics of person, of criminal, and subject of crime, and subject of criminal responsibility, we'll discuss what is the difference between uh, psychological and psychiatric characteristics of the criminal. What neuroscience makes uh, its efforts for uh, understanding of what crime, of what modern crime is. What have to do with the situation where on one count use the traditional uh, fundamentals of uh, guiltiness to analyze the behavior of certain uh, girl girl. What is the gap? What is the problem? The problem is that due to well legislation in force, due to uh, legislation in every country on the world, the person should be proven as guilty. So uh, we have to proof as uh, prosecutors or the judges that uh, we that this or girl or guy has a specific mental state 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 pardon me and this mental state should be proven to each element of crime a guy or a girl or a criminal has to analyze and to understand what is uh the social dangerousness of the act what is legal characteristics of the staff what is psychological characteristic it does the act is punishable or not that is the main elements of uh, understanding of guiltiness can you tell me my dear of friends what should we do as judges or prosecutors or investigators with sexual perverts because the sexual period, this is uh, men or women, these are the women, uh, men and women of so nowadays, well, maybe in other genders too, uh, due to new tolerance standards. So these are the subjects who commit sexual crime because of, uh, well, their guilty wine. We can't understand that. This guilty mind is not guilty in the psychological theory of uh, guiltiness. Because nothing means, uh, nothing is interesting for this person when she or he commits a crime. It is a very popular case uh, now, uh, the practice of European Court of Human Rights, when uh, somebody said about uh, the case named Ilzenauer uh, versus uh, uh, Germany of 19, uh, if not mistaken, December 
1918. The case is connected with the decision of uh, German court to put uh, Mr. I, a sexual predator, a uh, violent sexual predator, to jail for 10 years after spending 10 years as, uh, well, uh, a result of uh, punishment. So the next 10 years, they are not a punishment. The next 10 years were security measures. And the European Court of Human Rights, having a different decision due to uh, this position, especially when we say about uh, the psychology or psychological characteristics of uh, uh, people with the specific kinds of uh, their psychological activity, yes. So European Court of Human Rights said that uh, in that reason, uh, if uh, this kind of uh, imprisonment should not be a punishment, but should be a correctional measure, uh, should be a accomplished or a component, pardon me, with the element of psychological treatment, that will be a treatment, not a punishment. Treatment. You understand the treatment for 10 years. Well, there is a specific laws on uh, sexual predators, like the law Megan or Megan rule in the United States of America, or, well, uh, the law on uh, uh, habitual criminal in Germany of 1934, and the law on habitual, habitual criminal in Great Britain of 1902. They say that they have the same elements, and the same elements are connected with the idea that sometimes the guilty mind, or the, sometimes the theory of guilty mind, is not working in criminal law. And that is why the concept of crime should not be evolved in this situation. That is not the cases. When we say about the cases, we say, well, the guy is committing something antisocial, uh, makes antisocial behavior, but this behavior uh, well, uh, it is not it is not connected with the subjective side of the crime. From the other points of view, sexual predators know what they do. They want to do that, but there is an impulse. There's an impulse in specific behavior which is uh, have to be regulated by uh, specific kinds of uh, uh, legal empowerment. I don't know how, but the reason is that now for this. Uh, Guys, we use specific measures like chemical castration. We use specific measures like, uh, for example, uh, well, uh, detention for 10 years for violent crimes. It's a very, very uh, as for me, it is not clear the instrument as a whole. I understand for what it we, what reason we just use it, but due to the theory of criminal law, we have to reconstruct this model in up to Lombroso's ideas. Maybe in the nearest future we discuss it. So, uh, a journey through criminal state of mind. A journey through criminal state of mind. Why does it mean? We have to analyze when we are trying to breach the characteristics of crime. We have to analyze mental state of uh, people's behavior. That is why we have uh, to analyze, as uh, Article 23 of Criminal Code of Ukraine said, we have to analyze the psychological relationships between. Uh, offender's dependence on its uh, commission or omission of specific act of uh, offender's uh, relationship to the consequences of this act and offender's relationship to well intellectual uh, legal knowledge or have characteristics of this uh, act which he commits or committed that's all so the guilty uh, the man has be, to be proven is guilty if uh, 
depending on uh, his relationship or psychological relationship to his behavior, uh, its consequences, its uh, uh, generous relationships between uh, consequences and behavior, one should prove and understand that this behavior uh, was intellectually and psychologically uh, understandable by this guy from the point of view of legality, from the point of view of characteristics of its activity, from the point of view of uh, moral characteristics of this deed. Uh, as usual, we say about two, well, two or four uh, to be clear, you know, four forms of guiltiness. One of them is so-called purpose. Mental states of mind are organized hierarchically in uh, uh, our theory and uh, mostly we are saying about uh, uh, the concept of mens rea. The concept of mens rea in Common law countries is very popular, mostly, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, every jurisdiction of the United States of America has its own understanding of mens rea. By the way, the Model Penal Court of the U.S. has uh, traditional four uh, well, states of blameworthiness. The states uh, uh, gave us a characteristics of actors mental state at every uh, moment of this behavior. Uh, a person should act purposely if the defending uh, has an underlying uh, concise object there. A person acts purposely, or some people say that in, in our criminal court we are saying about intentional uh, kind of guilt, so the person acts intentionally if he acts with the intent that his action causes a certain result. Uh, a person should undertake, should understood, and should you know, make certain, per, well, certain positions, certain prepositions of his behavior with a uh, concept of casuality on this act. So the person hopes, the person wishes, the uh, well, legal criminal result that we've always behavior and behaves so for doing or attaining some results. That is the means, that means acting personally. Acting knowingly or knowledge as a form of uh, uh, criminal guilt. So, a knowledge of the form of guilty mind means that the person acts knowingly if uh, he is aware, aware that his conduct uh, will result in certain consequences. The defendant has to be personally and practically certain that the conduct will cause a practical result, but uh, it depends on circumstances, why not, or yes, okay. There's uh, something like that, the people put uh, uh, a bomb uh, in a plane for a terrorist and jealous act, uh, for example, but uh, put a trigger of this bomb, or clock mechanism, uh, not being knowing anything about the time of the flight. And that's why, for example, when the bomb blushes, well, well, we have a, a situation when this blast uh, injured, for example, the aerodromes or airplanes workers, now the passengers of this flight, and so on and so forth. The idea is, uh, at this moment is understandable because the deed was connected with the knowledge of that, that the, the uh, conduct will cause a practical reason or particular uh, illegal result, but it is not uh, done with the urge of doing that. Uh, recklessness, it's a very interesting form. Uh, the person is acting recklessly when uh, the defendant concisely 
uh, disregard of a substantial and unjustified risk. So the person acts recklessly if he is aware of substantial risk that certain result will occur. That is why this defendant doesn't know uh, for what sure, what a specific result will be proved or will be given in this situation. Uh, okay, it's very, 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 very specific kind of activity. Mostly what one could say that when we say about the uh, classification of offenders, we have one type of offender that is reckless offenders, and it's a very typical offenders up to nowadays because uh, the statutory offenses, especially Mala, uh, prohibita means this, uh, these offenses are committed with uh, recklessness as a uh, uh, form of guilty. Negligence, acting negligently, what does it mean? The defendant was not aware of the risk but should have been aware of it. The defendant was not aware but should have been aware. Uh, well, that is so-called the sustainable uh, and uh, unjustifiable risk. Sustainable because, well, it is uh, it prolongs in time. It prolongs in time and space. And sometimes we uh, are trying to, to understand the difference in not difference, but the. Uh, moral and psychological characteristics of uh, uh, this guilty mind, the guilty mind of uh, offender, while we are trying to reach full information about uh, the case as a whole. Uh, we know that uh, the criminal state of mind is not connected with only the guilt mind. Criminal state of mind is connected always with the motives, aims of uh, any social behavior, emotions or emotions state uh, or states of emotional states of mind. Well, I don't know whether it is right or not, but uh, due to our criminal code, it is very popular to say that sometimes we use antisocial motives or antisocial aims of the behavior like uh, which you are used as uh, qualified characteristics of crime well by the way from the point of view of traditional classic criminology we can say about two kinds of motives yes aggression well yes and greed that's all from the other point of view uh well when we say about human aggression uh well it is one of the main urges one of the main Motives of cyber, motive of cyber, uh, some people see it, but for me, that, that it is uh, an element of uh, civilization processes. Aggression uh, means to uh, people or form people to civilize them. When we use some kind of violent uh, kinds of behavior, that is why some people. Uh, like arm, uh, like arms. From other points of view, uh, the use of arms or the use of uh, psychological, emotional aggression is one of uh, main elements of uh, nowadays development. And uh, nobody could say about the problems which we are faced upon, because it is always a very interesting concept. Why do we use, for example, a characteristic of greed motives for, uh, well, thefts, yes, yeah, well, say that they have crimes, specific kinds of crimes which are connected with, uh, uh, well, property and uh, the illegal possession of property is very greedy, or antisocial hooligan motives of hooliganism. That is great. You know that in the 60s, well, uh, if you want, you should qualify as a hooliganism every deed in criminal code. Exact state treason, maybe. But that is the fact, because a very, very uh, flexible 
notion of hooliganism and hooligan motives. That is why the characteristics of the motives, yes, due to uh, legislation in force, they worked on uh, qualification of crimes if they are evolved in it. They worked on uh, penalties. They worked on understanding of uh, uh, social understanding of uh, specific kind of behavior. But the case is that sometimes um, maybe it would be more uh, correct to exclude the motives uh, from a uh, special part from the dispositions of uh, the norms of special court or part of uh, criminal code and to include uh, them especially for the principles of sentencing that's all for example the same position uh, we have in some jurisdictions of the US whatever they say about uh, usage of uh, uh, federal and state sentencing rules while we are trying to sentence an offender. Okay, uh, emotions and emotion characteristics. From my point of view, it's very huge uh, point for which we are uh, want to work on. Exactly, criminal law and psychology are not connected to each other because the neuroscience, neuropsychology elements of uh, uh, understanding of biological state of mind are thrown out. Just the case of Ilsinger against uh, Germany. That's a typical situation. You know, 10 years, 10 years of imprisonment as an element of uh, correctional measure without any specific uh, decision of the judge. I don't know how it should be being correct, but from the other point of view, we have the same situation, for example, during Hitler's and Stalin's regime, when we say that people are socially dangerous. By the way, well, the concept of social dangerousness is connected with a specific state of mind, and sometimes this specific state of mind. Uh, is used by us, for example, when we're saying about the homicide uh, with uh, uh, the state of effect. And the state of effect, that's the specific state of dangerousness of specific people. That is why we one can try to understand it, to qualify and to analyze. Well, we'll do it in the future. Next question I want to see, uh, I want to uh, maybe show some additional uh, information on it. The next question is connected with the uh, well, elements of the double guilty, uh, elements of uh, mistake, uh, and uh, cases. Cases, that's uh, mostly some uh, very specific element. Uh, you know that cases means that there is no guiltiness. So, for characteristic of crime, one of them is absent. That is why we have only three. And that is why we have no notion of crime. Let's understand. That. That's why, for example, if we have a state of cases uh, which is connected with emotional uh, characteristics of guiltiness, and guiltiness doesn't exist, it's a whole. Uh, the absence of subject side means that we can't, one can't use uh this position uh from the other point of view you know, uh, different legislation have uh, a very specific uh fifth state of mind it is not connected with the uh cases uh it's so called strict liability strict liability require crimes do not re require a guilty state of mind they re require a specific state of specific people. That means that, for example, in Israel, in uh, Great Britain, in the United States of America, a uh, defendant committed the crime uh, to satisfy any inquiry uh, 
inquiry in the wrongful act uh, regardless of the defendant's mental state. This means that due to social characteristics of the defendant, due to its uh, his kind of activity, uh, well, there is no specific distinction between expressing uh, or amplifying some of the kind of this analysis. In Ukrainian or in Slavic legislation, we have so-called uh, double guilty uh, concept, which means that the person has to be uh, proof. Uh, so the prosecutor has to prove uh, the person's guiltiness and intentional in uh, intentional breakage of uh, specific rules of conduct and the, the person negligence to the consequences of this conduct. For example, that is traditional uh, position in traffic offense, yes, or aggravated assault with death of victim, yes, so the per person, uh, well, show an intentional uh, breakage of uh, specific rules when he assaults the victim, but from the other point of view, she or uh, he or she wants to beat him, not to, uh, well, murder him. And that is why the, uh, there is, uh, this deed is qualified as aggravated assault, but not as, uh, uh, well, a homicide. Uh, mistake in criminal law. As usual, one can't say anything about mistake, especially in uh, our legislation, but some criminal code of our neighbors has the same uh, position. Well, what does it mean? Uh, we have two kinds of mistakes in criminal law. Uh, one of them is legal mistake and uh, I, well, as a defendant, uh, well, uh, should commit a crime uh, not understanding of uh, the characteristics of criminal prohibition, not understanding the penalty, or not understanding of uh, qualification of this deed. Uh, the question is that, that is just, uh, from one point of view, we are uh, faced upon the standard position of uh, European Court of Human Rights and faced upon the standard position of uh, the ancient uh, proverbs, uh, legal proverbs, ignorantia is non excuse. Yes. It means that uh, if we can't understand the criminal prohibition, we have. Uh, uh, to know it by our status, by, by our position, and so on and so forth. Yes, there is a specific uh, decision of constitutional court. This, there is a specific, specific decisions of European Court of for, um, human rights, especially in uh, understanding or the usage of Article Seven of uh, European Convention on Protecting uh, Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, which are connected with the rule of uh, uh, clear legal consent, with the rule of proportionality of uh, uh, our impact, or proportionality of uh, uh, legal impact as a whole. So, so the clear understanding of people, what they have to do, depends on their knowledge of legal characteristics of their deed. Sometimes it is uh, very discussable if we have, for example, this, this situation when we have a uh, very short, uh, narrow uh, characteristic of what con concrete norm is, and uh, for what concrete norm is used, yes. And from the other point of view, we have a specific uh, bylaws or other specific documents which are used in this situation and uh, we didn't know we know everything about criminal prohibition but didn't know anything about the specific acts which regulates it for example the specific uh, rules in uh, well building industry or in atomic energy or uh, well just uh, arms uh, producing and so on and so forth. Uh, factual mistake means that we have been uh, 
in contact with the mistakes in object, the mistake uh, in means, or mistakes in uh, uh, qualified means by which are used by a specific criminal norm. As a whole, we use the position of uh, factual, uh, factual and legal mistake for the uh, defendant of people in some situation, but usually uh, the standard means that a uh, commission of uh, uh, a crime with a deliberate intent to harm a victim or uh, indifference in, in harm, so connects uh, at any rate should be connected with with the prosecution of guilty subject of crime the characteristic of subject of crime uh, it's uh, guilty mind would be the theme of our uh, next lecture thank you